Luigi, but these are two characters that just go off stage and then stop you from making it back ever. Right, Lucina, absolutely a character known for her edge guarding prowess. Luigi uh, in Smash 4, of course, we knew that he was able to cyclone people removed in this game, but. You have all that experience from going off stage so much in Smash 4. Elegant, of course, was spent the vast majority of his time playing sets off stage. It's kind of crazy how comfortable he is without any ground beneath his feet. Especially, I mean, man, <laughs> I mean, you put it right there. Without any ground beneath his feet, he just understands how to get every inch, every droplet out of that Luigi recovery and out of the uh, out of the kills as well. I saw. I was kind of shocked to see that. Down throw to Tornado has made the return for Luigi. Elegant made big use of that. That's incredible. It's because they said, all right, well, since you can't use Cyclone to recover anymore, we got to make it strong. And then because down throw is still pretty you know, weak, he's just able to jump up there and do the down B. That's and great. I said, what? This is back? Did we not learn our lesson? <laughs> Did we not learn our lesson? Because you know what this means? Oh. About a year down the line, they're going to make it, and they go, yeah, yeah, all right. So down throw to down B is too strong, so we're going to make down B weaker, but it'll go a little bit higher if you just mash it. <laughs> and then Elegant will be right back to dumping people off the ledge. Oh, no. But, man, so far, Elegant hasn't even needed the dumpster, which he doesn't have access to anymore. He hasn't even needed it to get those edge guards. No, he's landed a fair bit of down airs on his own. He's been able to use that plunger and the uh, Zare really effectively, actually, to block Austin's recovery in particular. That was disgusting. I don't even want to think about that, man. Yeah. What 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 disgusts me is that we're going to see it again. I do not have a doubt in my mind. We are going to see that edge guard again. Yeah, elegant making great use of the new tools that Luigi's been given in this game. That was the most awkward handshake I've ever done seen between teammates. <laughs> you see Elegant and SDX there like, man, the coordination on screen has been a lot better than what we saw there because, I mean, you were watching set one. You saw just how efficiently they were able to pick apart these guys in winner's finals. Oh, my goodness. Everybody getting caught in that Fox Rapid jab on this game one of Smashville. I mean, they said everyone is here. I didn't think that they just mean everyone was here inside Fox Jab. I didn't think he could fit them all, but here we are, 72 characters, man. Oh, my goodness. That's about what it felt like. That long distance grab put Austin off stage. And again, we're seeing the Zare putting him in a situation that's difficult to recover so that uh, SDX was actually able to focus on Jason. Wow. But speaking of focus on Jason, you got to focus on how he was able to take that stock and be there for his boy Austin who is having a little bit of trouble getting away from Elegant, is able to DI out of that down throw to down B, Do and Elegant's having it? problems DIing out of the, the PK fires. Might have been trying to match the tornado, Ooh, having dead. invincibility. Oh my god, I can't believe I spoke too soon. No, but he got basically a stomp B comboed into <laughs> that nest down air to up air. Yeah. Good damage, Elegant sitting at 110%. Could be that time for Jason to start going in and try to take the stock. We almost saw a double Luigi dash attack kill, and I think the end result could just be the same, but I will eat my words right there. Austin doing a great job to cover his teammate, but Jason too aggressive. Austin going for a back throw on SDX, maybe getting a little bit mixed up yet. Almost no percent on him. Now Elegant still holding on to that high percent stock. Almost gets baited in the PK Thunder 2, but really smart recovery. SDX going way too deep against Jason. Mm -hmm. That's not the first time we've seen SDX go too deep either. We saw that in set one, I believe, in game two, where he did SD because he went out so deep. Austin saying that Elegant got a little bit wily there. He says, I can kill you with this back throw anywhere. Oh, my God, right off the platform. And now there's a small lead for the red team. Austin still holding on to his second Whoop! stock. He got some big damage right there on Elegant, putting him up to 67. Time for the red team to shine. If they take this first game one, that could be a big beginning for them. Austin trying to get the quick kill, maybe on a stage spike against SDX, but he DIs up. He's able to avoid the stage. And we're back to even stock count. We've seen what the edge guards look like from the blue team. Right, Austin felt the need to go for a really far away recovery because SDX had been doing such a good job of swatting him away in the past. Uh, they're not quite able to get the stock trade, but he did have one to lose in this scenario. At least he got Ooh. a lot of damage on SDX. Both players yeah, sitting at kill percent SDX. Now maybe a grab away, a narrow away. There's a lot of situations here. The back air, of course, K 
catching him. He no has jump. no resources. Yeah, caught him out of the jump from ledge. Yeah, uh, we talked about like the edge guarding, right? How big that was for the blue team. I think he turned that around. The edge trapping from the red team, the fact that they were even able to set that up in doubles is impressive enough, but the fact that they made it work so well against these guys goes to show you that linear recoveries can really, really hurt you. Absolutely, and there was multiple times where they were trying to get too aggressive against Austin off stage, and they just took a ton of damage from that PK Thunder too. Uh, sometimes even letting Austin live through it all. It's uh, you gotta wonder if they're going to back off a little bit more in this next game and pick their battles a little bit more. I think I think that that's uh, you know sort of the game plan. I mean, Blue Team did such a good job of doing like one v ones in set number one. I think that going into set number two, they've tried to go for, okay, let's see if we can get like the 2v1s. Let's see if we can set up for, you know, the, the these big crazy combos. And now that maybe they got to realize, okay, let's step it back. Let's just go back to what works. I think also picking a bigger stage like FD will be big for them so that they can separate the red team. Yeah, definitely need a little bit more room. We've seen multiple times now how much the red team triumphs on those smaller stages. Oh my God, it's still alive. A little bit too early. We, now, we said the edge guards from Elegant. We could be seeing the wacky stuff. And Jason, the only path back to the stage was to save Elegant. It's big for the blue team because they are now able to start this off with the lead. What a bait from Austin going for the down throw instead of the back throw. It took miss time. The punish from Elegant ends up getting a kill on him in response. Mm -hmm. Not miss time from Austin in the slightest. Did have to get the tech. Uh, was able to make it back. Putting a little bit of a juggle here on Elegant. That's like, one of the big things I love about Elegant. When he gets hit, he doesn't always feel the need to fade in, even though he's got that frame three near. Oh my goodness. Two quick stocks for the blue team. Two quick stocks putting them a full two stocks ahead. Dude, like I said, Elegant's edge guarding never ceases to amaze me. Uses the plunger to set up for the down air. Austin trying to set up for an early kill. We'll see if he can get the edge guard on Elegant. And with the tap down, no jump, he will take it. We're back to just about an even game. That is crazy how much this is swinging. Stocks dropping so early compared to the last set where everyone had to hit very hyper sense and die on, on stage. We're seeing some crazy offstage interactions. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff on stage too with Austin pulling out this PK fires once again. It looks like Elegance just having difficulty reacting to uh, DI for that. And now with Elegant dropping that stock, gotta go for the share stock. Austin, unfortunately, trapping Jason into the up smash. And he's sitting at a very high percent. Whoever gets to this 2v1 first is going to be at a big advantage. But Austin sitting at the highest percent right now has to be careful. Love Does that chase. <laughs> Double chase from the blue team, not giving Austin any avenues back down. Absolutely not. This is going to be a charge smash attack. Good, some good damage for Jason committing to that rabbit jab. I don't like to commit to that double jump there from Jason. Committing to a double jump against these guys means so much trouble. They're trying to set up at least at angles where it's hard for them to challenge that Nair coming down. Goes for the empty landing. Is able to cross over. <gasps> Tried to go deep. He needed to get that edge guard to even have a fighting chance. But, man, no tech available for that Dolphin Slash. Such a quick move. Yeah, multiple times now we've seen Jason drop to that. And SDX has mixed up the timing a couple of times as well. Uh, one time I saw him run off with just single hit of the Dancing Blade and catch... Jason going for the buffered air dodge, trying to tech something. Mm -hmm. Buffered air dodge has been a killer on people trying to get those techs because they, you know, we used to smash four, man. It's like we spam that thing, you get it right, you know, about half the time that way. But man, in this game, you just got to be so much more careful. And I think Jason was just a little bit late because he's afraid, like you said, of that buffered air dodge. So we'll see if going back onto the smaller stage, like we saw in set one, works out for the red team. Uh, as it has in the past for them because they love keeping it aggressive. They love keeping it in that 2v1 situation. Here we go. Crazy interactions off the left side of the stage. We'll see what's going on. Once again, Elegant fading away instead of trying to jump in to challenge those hitboxes from Austin. Again, even with great Luigi hitboxes on landing, I love that he has the tenacity to just run away. But... To be said, not giving Austin the leeway to just take control of the stage. You saw what he did right there with one too many commits. Able to get him all the way off stage and set a 2v1 situation on Jason up. SDX pushed off stage without Elegant to help him out. There we go, comes through with the invincibility. 
SDX again further pushed off with a forward throw. Now Elegant getting comboed by Jason Austin back and forth. I can't believe that we almost saw just a legendary combo there from the red team, but barely missing it out. They love these platforms for the extensions, but they rely on them a little bit too much when they recover back to the stage, and SDX able to take advantage of it right there. He it right within line for blue team to keep it going. And red team, slight advantage. Jason on his first stock, but again, misses the tuck on that Dolphin Slash, but... You oh, take that in. trade if you're the red team. Elegant I would take that all the time. Red team, almost a full stock ahead. But the big damage is coming in for the blue team. Austin did not dribble the yo-yo off the side of the stage, couldn't walk the dog, and Elegant got a big punish on that, and all of a sudden, blue team's the one with the lead now. There we go, Elegant putting on even more damage on Jason, catches him trying Whoa. to recover high with the tornado, but uh, PK Thunder 2 from Austin again. Man is insane. Like we said, man, early kills are the name of the game in the sets between these two. Really working out in favor of the red team, bringing it back to even. But will they be able to manage in these 1v1s? Austin says, nah, Jason, you got to focus on Elegant. I will take care of this Lucina. There we go. Focus on Elegant. We will. He's on the right side of the stage all by himself up here, poking through the shield. Forward throw to hit both opponents with that collateral damage hitbox. I love the, I don't know if you saw the shield angling there from Austin, but that was so big to keep himself safe from both sides. Need to make sure that that big noggin's not exposed, but Austin the, the noggin is exposed. Austin was committing to a lot of charge smash attacks there. And in a, in a single situation where you just have one person off stage and you're trying to go for the edge guard with Ness, that's a really riskless position. In doubles, you are absolutely at risk from the big sword coming in from the teammate. You the can't only, commit to the same kind of ledge traps that you would have in singles. The only thing that you can rely on is your teammate to come in and help you out. And Jason just wasn't right next to him every time he was charging the smash attacks. And uh, we'll hold up and talk about that in a second. Because first, we got to talk about how this match is changing up with SDX going to the Mewtwo. Right, SDX going to his Smash 4 main in the Mewtwo. Wonder. Uh, with the stage being the same, what prompted him to swap back? Maybe thinking that he kind of stole that last game, but really is Lucina was doing phenomenal work off stage. So we'll see what the Mewtwo brings to the table. He doesn't have a lot of faith in Mewtwo yet in this game, and a little bit of the reason why. Yeah, a little bit that he's just maybe not comfortable enough to try to angle down to that ledge, and Jason's ready for that with the forward smash to cover just about everything. Austin getting kite blocked by the green missile, and SDX trying to give his teammate the opportunity for the save, but it's a double SD. That is so unfortunate for the blue team. He went and kite blocked Austin, went, tried to save Elegant, but the single coin put Mewtwo in a situation where he couldn't recover, and his recovery not having a hitbox meant that he wasn't able to help out Elegant, so that was two quick stocks below 30%, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. That puts red team in a massive advantage. Horrible situation if you're looking at the blue team right now. Because, I mean, again, now, even they're at their kill percents. And SDX already, just a minute into the game, has dropped all three stocks. And Elegant's looking to drop what will be his last. And you got to ask yourself, where is the Lucina and what happened to her? I think she's going to be coming back for game five. Jason, what are you doing? <laughs> Doing what you do when you're up five stocks to one uh, with a minute 30 into a double set, I think. You know, I I can't argue against that too strongly. But like man, we say, we say be out. careful against SDX, right? Yeah. Like, world-class player, but That hey. up smash hitting through the platforms is so strong, especially with shield poking be as potent as it is, especially when you have that biased stage hazard of Ness <laughs> tossing out those PK Thunders. It's a scary position to be in. Now, I would be shocked if we didn't see the Lucina come back. I would with, I would say that they're trying to get into set two at yeah. that point. With a, with a set to play with, maybe SDX is going to try to believe a little bit more. Once the tournament well, I, practice, right? I want to know what prompted him to switch in the first place. I think it Maybe just, thinking, I'm up, a, I'm up a game. If we win this one, it's over. I want the little bit of extra room. Maybe. Yeah, yeah going right back to, back to, to it. I gotta. Don't want to draw this out into another set if you don't have to. You want to keep that tournament energy for 
you know, singles. You're right. trying to win this tournament, man. Again, SDX and Elegant coming from winner's side, and Ballard, Jason, and TL Austin coming from losers means that they'll have to win this game in order to reset the bracket, go through an entire other set to potentially win, whereas only one more game and SDX and Elegant come out on top of this tournament. Okay, all right. A lot of quick damage built up on SDX, pretty much all by Austin. Getting a lot of mileage out of that up air and, of course, off of the edge guards. And speaking of mileage, you're getting a lot of mileage on the distance of that up smash. Jason getting a kill before he's even above the white percents. Ooh, air dodge. That's scary, but it was not directional, so he was able to make it back. That, again, Jason not able to hit the text on the side of the stage. Maybe didn't even expect to be sent in that direction. I certainly don't blame him. But... And now, again, Jason and Austin, both the kind of guys to say, hey, we're down. We got to make some action happen. They're not even down by that much. Now they may be down a little bit more with that counter coming out from SDX. So they try to make up for their mistakes by, you know, going in that much harder. And, you know, so far working out for Jason, working out for him pretty well. Yeah, catching that up smash now. Even stock count total, but Elegant sitting at kill percent, absolutely. Putting on a lot of damage, though. Luigi combo game is still incredible. He may be at uh, kill percents, but he is not afraid to s keep swinging, man. Sometimes, that's a problem, though. Fading in too hard and letting Jason take that stock with the Nair. It's up to SDX to hold on to that last stock of his. Make sure that he can stick around for Elegant to keep up that combo game. That dash attack is so strong! Yeah, Luigi dash attack in this game has been massively buffed, functioning as an actual usable Oof. tool. Yes. All right, SDX setting up for an edge guard on Austin and actually going to leave it up to Elegant to close that out. Oh, I love the use of the tornado to try to cover the high recovery there and great DI by SDX. Yeah, somehow living at such a high percent, but Jason eventually catches him with the back air. Or throw putting Elegant off stage. He had his jump, able to make it back. Right, Fox can't two-frame the ledge with that up tilt anymore, so it's a lot harder to get this ledge trap on Luigi. How on earth is Elegant still playing the front line right now? That makes no sense to me at 113. He just likes to go in, hold the buttons, and have SDX be his support. But that might lead to their downfall here. Not going to quite catch the down smash. Ooh, ambitious neutral be there from SDX. Elegant goes down, and it's up to him to keep himself and Elegant from having to play a set two. I'll see if he can close it out, but based on what we've seen from the 2v1s of Austin and Jason, that's been their bread and butter this whole set. I'd be surprised to see SDX make this comeback at this percent, man. Yeah, sitting very close to these kill percents, sitting at 81. Getting a little bit of heals going as well. Getting a oh. lot of bit of heals going at SDX. As soon as they pushed SDX off stage and started getting a little more healing, SDX was like, alright, this is a an effort that is not worth it. No, it's just, this is fruitless. Even if I got a shield break, I bet that I would get knocked off stage and they just go right back to healing. So, man, we're on to set number two between SDX and Elegant and Austin and Jason who have just reset the bracket on these two widely known players. Now, it was down to a game five. One of those games dropped with the with the Mewtwo counter pick not quite working out how they anticipated. Yeah. That was while Elegant and SDX had the momentum on their side, too. They just won the game. But it definitely shifted momentum into the red team's favor. We'll see if that comes back to bite SDX and Elegant. It already has lost them a set, but will it lose them the tournament? Going back to the first stage that we had in the first set, up close and personal on Smashville. Up close and personal, man. Been working out for the red team thus far. Doing a good job of just keeping it close and putting on a lot of damage. But, man, if there's one thing we know about Elegant, he loves to scrap. He was sitting at like 130 at the end of that last game five. And he was still going in and will continue to go in. Rich homie Quan, I will never stop going in. Ooh, but it might be his downfall. No saving his jump. He has a lot of distance on that recovery. Austin not able to find a big answer to it. He jab locked his teammate with the <laughs> with the pummels. That is a brand new concept to me. Yeah, I definitely have not seen anything like that before. I don't think Austin intended that. No. 
All right. Austin floating in, man. Like you said, he likes to fade in a lot. And that is a little bit of his downfall. I see Telegraph said a little bit too much into his recovery, but flying right in with that Nair does take out Elegant's first stock. It's up to SDX to keep the stock lead on the side of the blue team. But with Austin harassing you, it takes that air dodge to keep you alive. There we go, gonna up air catch. Uh, catch Elegant trying to get aggressive. Pushing Austin off stage, that PK fire covers him nicely. All right, Austin with SDX off stage again, trying to get that PK fire gimp. He got that once in uh, set number one in winner's finals, but you know, SDX ain't gonna give that to you. Continuing to find traps for Elegant to set up those super jump punches though. Right, Elegant consistently hitting that up special. So powerful, taking a lot of early stocks. Austin not even having to get gimped off the edge. Okay, great stall from Austin, but meanwhile, that means that he can't go support his teammate. Getting taken down by that tornado, will Elegant be able to finish off Austin? What a no. weave! Great weave. But does again find that super jump punch. It's Jason all by his lonesome against two fresh stocks on the blue team. We're covering to the other side of the stage, but he's going to go for the stage spike. Not able to find it. SDK. Just going to play a little bit of defense as Elegant goes in on Jason. Gets a little bit of that 1v1 going. Stage spike. None! The shine spike! Jason has evened this up between him and Elegant. Oh my goodness. He's sitting at 56%, but that's not crazy for the matchup for Fox to be able to put Luigi in the air. Luigi traditionally has a phenomenal combo break, but against... Uh, oh! oh my god! Elegant with a pop-off too. This man leaned back in his seat and said yes! Can you blame him? The B reverse up special coming out of nowhere? My goodness. Saving the day for the blue team. That is the most shocking last 20 seconds I've seen. Holy cow. Jason turning everything around with a shine spike, making that game even possible in the first place was incredible, but Elegant maintaining composure after all of that with a exclamation point to end game one. Uh, an exclamation point in both his voice and just to the game itself. So consistent, like you said, landing those up specials and of course netting the kills with them as well. Mirroring Austin's uh, level of consistency hitting PK Thunder 2s in their losers final set. That's incredible. <laughs> he at least for at least four in one game. And you say tomato, I say potato. You know, they may sound similar. They may not be the same thing, but when it comes to the end of it, those are still hard hitting up specials from both guys. And man, I expect to see a lot more of them here on Battlefield for game two, like we said. Close quarters has been wonderful for the red team. Jason off stage, but Oh, what a Great save from save. Elegant. Elegant immediately noticed, oh my gosh, SDX is going in too deep again, really trying to prove himself, so he gets him back in line. All right, good recoveries by SDX. He's holding himself back together. We'll see. Great pickups on the edge guard there by Jason. Perfectly timed air dodge, but it's a frame trap right into SDX. Right, SDX covering the air dodge while uh, Elegant covers anything else. Having invincibility on that tornado would catch an aggressive option, as well as probably fast enough to catch the jump. Okay, love that Austin was able to drift with that Psy Magnet, but unable to get the full retribution after that up special on the Jason, the super jump punch once again, so strong. Jason on his last stock. Okay, but stocks, uh, Jason on his last stock, however, Austin still on his first, elegant as well. Only a slight stock lead for the blue team, but they do have some solid momentum. Off stage right now, though. I love that Austin, going for the edge guards at the very least, has had the uh, wherewithal to actually pull back and say, okay, I want to fade in, I want to get this kill, but I know that I got to come back on stage that Jason doesn't need to pull out all the stops to try to save me. Percent leads. Oh my god, again! Heavily, heavily in blue team's favor. Three out of three kills so far have come from Elegance up B. Not able to make it back, and Austin was just going to make sure that he did not have that jump. Stocks again evened out, but Austin sitting at a very, very high percent. Up smash, all right. First stock we've seen taken by the blue team in this match or in this game that hasn't been. Oh, that's a bit of instinct there from Elegant, but still able to set up for an edge guard. Austin able to make it back just barely, but. 
We have been talking about how good the edge guard game is there from Elegant, and he just scares Austin to death. Right, Austin wasn't quite able to get the distance with that air dodge that he wanted. And now it's a much harder 2v1 <gasps> than we saw. Oh my goodness, the combo right there, like we said, team combos strong. Using the Luigi Cyclone to get Jason off the top. And it's even more grim. aggressive ending to game two. Even more aggressive all the way through. Did you see how many super jump punches Elegant landed? A lot. Quite a bit. Quite a few indeed. And now, if man, if Blue Team gets one more game like that, they'll be your Smash Ultimate doubles champions at no fun allowed three. But they've got one more game that they got to win. And you've seen that, you know, as long as SDX doesn't go to the Mewtwo, that's uh, certainly a possibility for them. I mean, this is absolutely where momentum turned around in set one, but we're not making the same mistake of pulling the Mewtwo out on Battlefield again. It's time to lean forward for these guys. It's time to get the job done. Jason really trying to go out to get the job done early and almost ends up dying for it. Right, this Great parry! But that up tilt not coming into itself at such low percents, Luigi's able to break out with an air. As he normally will be able to. Air dodge on, great by Austin, but that just ends up setting up for more vortexes for Elegant, who's able to chase and get the super jump punch. No kill, but big damage. And how does he so consistently find these super jump punches? Man, I think that's just because Elegant has such a good understanding of what his opponent's options are. I mean, specifically against these characters like, uh, you know, Ness and Fox, a lot of what they do is telegraphed. And because of that telegraphed recovery, Elegant figured that he'd go for a little bit of the sauce. Yeah, not quite finding the taunt KO and eventually dropping his stock to Jason now. Uh, Jason and SDX on their first stocks. Jason dropping his SDX, holding on with uh, middling to high percents. Meager percents, honestly. You only got to worry about the edge guard right now for SDX, but also got to worry about his teammate. Can't let Elegant be dropping those stocks just yet. And go back in an air since Austin off pretty far. Air dodge not quite going to be able to make it back for him. Oh. And what a punish that air dodge puts you in a ton of lag despite all the drift that it gives you. Another super jump punch. Elegant has been the star of the show. Uh, yeah, no doubt about that, man. Especially here in set two. He's just clicked on the brain and he is pulling out all the stops to make this set end as quickly as humanly possible. Doesn't want to give these guys the satisfaction. Going for the edge guard with the green missile as well on Fox Recovery. Oh my gosh, he gets the misfire and it actually kills him. No, he has his jump. No, I'm saying Not he's dead. I'm yep. saying he's dead. Like, that is a terrible angle for Luigi to try to recover at. Really smart option by Jason to go for the down smash to cover it. Good play by the red team, and with good enough play, they can actually put themselves into the lead if they can just get these combos that they need, or maybe just the one edge guard that was giving them so much success in set number one. Right, they do have a small percent deficit oh, right now. Oh, Elegant, what is you doing? Going for some style. I, I would say who can blame him, but right now, stocks are even. I would not be going for anything goofy. We go reverse it in the forward air. Not quite going to be able to punish the air dodge, but does eventually catch Austin again, pushes him off stage. Going so deep, and Austin just playing a game of chicken with Elegant. You know, they want to swing both of these players, never stop hitting those buttons. Missing that pivot grab, but Elegant, great fake out there, able to toss Austin off stage, give himself the opportunity to go with Jason. And not giving him a ride to the blast zone just yet. And SDX killing his teammate. Yeah, Austin holding him in place tenderly. Okay. Look at that down air. Wow, picking up the kill on the slide back with the up smash. It's down to a 2v1, but this could turn into an even game quickly. Right. Both low percents on Jason and Elegant, but if Jason's able to go through the wall of Luigi Aerials right now and find a KO on SDX, he could absolutely find this game doable. Ooh, I love trying to pick up that quick edge guard with the back air, catch SDX slipping. It's happened a couple times already. But man, when it comes down to it, sometimes you just got to challenge that 1v1. But Jason, with the quick pickup on the up air, is once again getting the opportunity to 1v1 Elegant on the double stage. We'll see what he can pick up here. Catching the late hit dash attack, waits for the Nair combo break. Has Luigi at the edge. Could be big for Jason. 
So patient. Oh my gosh, Elegant. Jason was daring him to press a button and he just didn't. Forward throw, comboing, not guaranteed, mind you, but comboing into the illusion, into the upper afterwards. Jason putting on some quick damage, Ooh. just dash attacking through all the lasers. He has no fear. Elegant, uh, I think, has a pretty good understanding of what kind of defense Jason likes to play. And we know that it's laser heavy, but Jason able to get the read on the tech back. A small little pop off for him as well. We're going to game four. Honestly, I was horrified as Elegant ran through all those lasers that we were going to see something much scarier than the dash attack. <laughs> I really thought the super jump punch was coming. I thought you that was going to be it. You and me both, but Jason managed to survive that one interaction and take the 2v1 in the red team's favor, now going to a game of four. Crazy that they had to fight that hard just for one game. That's in what this we, second set. That's what we saw in winners finals, man. Not surprised to see it happen again in grands. Competitive as it gets. This is game number nine of this set. That kind of momentum can absolutely swing how this game four looks, though, especially for Jason. Keep your eye on him in this next game, how hot he might be playing. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, yeah, if he starts off this game, especially like if it's on a small stage and he just goes in there swinging out with a lot of moves, you know that he's got the fire underneath him. You know he's playing with the heart. Looks like we're going again to Unova, the counter pick for the blue team. And again, man, I just think that this is a great stage for the blue team because you're taking away that top platform, you're taking away the escape options for Ness, importantly, and you're taking away the combo game for the Fox. That top platform was particularly important in the 2v1 at the very end of the last game, allowing Jason to be so elusive and get around Elegant uh, so fast to find that falling up air on SDX. Mm -hmm. But now your middle, your middle ground is a little bit uh, more open-ended. It's uh, You don't get to have those cutoff points. To escape to. So we'll see how it rolls right now. An even start for both teams, just focusing on one member of the other. Austin, uh, dangerous recovery, and Jason untackable at the side of the stage. That was really unfortunate. He was forced in a situation where if Jason had tried to recover from that scenario, he would have absolutely eaten the PK Thunder from Austin and forced him to not recover. Uh, but there. It was just a really bad situation to be in. Uh-oh. Austin not willing to go off stage though. Just wants to charge those smash attacks. That's one of the things, man. It's scary to go off and try to actually properly ledge guard his Ness, even with the Luigi totally helpless. But on stage, you got to be scared when you are down three stocks to the five of the blue team. Right, because Elegant took that such an early stock on Jason with an incredible chase. We saw the chases before. What a tech! Oh my gosh, is SDX going to keep looping him? Great tech again from Jason, this time getting him back. Incredible that he was able to live at all, only with 81% on him now. Oh man, that's not an only when you've got an elegant on the other team. I'm just going to say that, That's true. Terrifying. That super jump punch is coming. Jason too low to make it back. Oh, and this is looking like a wash, like the end of the last of the winner's set where it was all momentum on the red team side until the last game where just a steamroll coming yeah. out of SDX and Elegant. They're playing with fire. Neighbor, we may love our boys from DFW, but this is uh, this is curtains for sure. There we go. They still have some fighting spirit. They're not running off the stage just yet. Want to see with some simple, clean play if they can turn things around. Oh, well, that's a start right there, man. You turn that back, you turn that back, and if it's up to Jason to take three stocks, he's the kind of guy that's done it before, and if Elegant keeps getting goofy, it could end up being an issue, but Jason, he knows that he's outclassed. He's not about to challenge the world class that he's going up against, so man, great stuff by the blue team there. Elegant and SDX are your NFA3 doubles champions for Smash Ultimate, but neighbor, we saw a good fight from Austin and Jason. They definitely kept it competitive, set one went to game five really, really close. Austin and Jason were able to take it, reset the bracket. And uh, it wasn't a complete steamroll in in Grin's last set until that last game where Elegant and SDX just really went in. Very close. Some of, the, some of the games were pop-off worthy. Oh, yeah. For the blue team. So, I mean, yeah, they man. They were pushed to the brink. Pushed to the that brink That last for game, sure. they just activated their... Activated heat mode, dude. Yeah. They started playing Yakuza 0, and they said, all right, we fought enough. Now we're ready to pull out the, the finisher. Mm -hmm. Finish strongly now. 
look forward to seeing all of these competitors in singles. Mm -hmm. Expecting Elegant, of course, to go very deep. Austin as well, considering the track record that he's shown back at Ultimate Shockwave and uh, other DFW events around the horn. Yeah, uh, if you all haven't been keeping up with Ultimate Shockwave,